Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 229. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. Coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is February 23rd, 2022. I love how yesterday was Tuesday. Um, anyways, so if you are watching live and you're new here, put new in the chat so we can say hello to you. If you're watching on the replay, hello, replay warriors. Put, hash, uh, put hashtag replay in the chat. I'll say hi to you after the live stream. And welcome to those of you watching live. Tonight, I'm gonna to be sharing two projects for you from the Hello Ladybug bundle. I'm just like dying over that bundle and the super fun projects I have to share with you tonight. Let me do a quick sneak peek. We've got this, it's a shadow box. I will show you when I flip the camera, but it's an easier version of a shadow box for those of you that are afraid to try them. And then this is actually a card, but you could just do the red scalloped edge um, and have that as like a little random act of kindness to give out. But oh my gosh. I cannot take credit for the bumblebee. I think that goes to Julie Gilson at Stampin' Gala. I was dying over the bumblebee for that. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, Brian, are you ready for your moment? My husband Brian is watching your comments tonight. If you do have a question, okay, you're good. <laughs> Please put a Q colon in front of your question. That will help us pull together questions. We will do rapid fire Q and A at the end of the live stream. Any question you have, whether it's related to the project or not, we'll go through those questions at the end. That way I can focus on the project. Let's see. I wanna make sure I'm seeing any comments here. Let me catch up. Let's see if we've got anybody new watching. Hey, hey, from Tampa Bay, Norlene, hello. You guys are awesome. So yeah, Q colon in front of your question. We'll grab those at the end. Let's see what is next here. My monthly host code is 762EYWZW. And if you think that's a mouthful, it is. So go ahead and use the link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop when you order with me. That will automatically add the host code to your order. And if your order is $50 or more, you get to choose one of these three free gifts with me this month. This is available through February 28th, which is Monday. If your order is gonna be $150 or more, make sure you remove that host code because you're actually gonna earn stamping rewards on that order. So, but you'll still get to earn this month's free gift as well. Let's see. Celebration ends on Monday. I had a sad face, but I love celebration. It didn't feel right to put a sad face. Monday is the last day to take advantage of celebration. There are three amazing ways to earn free product. The first is purchases of $50 or hundred. We have two levels of free products to choose from, stamp sets and beautiful papers. Then the second way is to place an order of $300 or more in addition to the $50 purchase and the $100 purchase level items, you also will earn the Calming Camellia host stamp set. And the third way, which is my favorite of all, is the join promotion. The, the $99 starter kit is only, sorry, the, yes, the $99 starter kit is $125 worth of product of choice, plus any two free stamp sets. I know you all have stamp sets on your wish list. Um, the most, the two most expensive stamp sets, I think total up to $66 and you may hear my golden retriever coughing in the background. <laughs> um, so that is only available through Monday, February 28th. Now we also have the all together collection is available now. That is a stamp set dies paper. And then the, um, the welcoming of our new stamp and blends, the natural tones stamp and blends. Um, right now the full collection is not available because the light I think it's the light Stampin' Blends are currently unorderable. They're out of stock at the moment. They should be back in stock for the annual catalog, but just to keep, just wanted to point that out in case you're trying to purchase the whole collection. Now the stamp set, the dies, and the papers are while supplies last. Those are exclusive up through May 2nd. The blends will be in the annual catalog. All right, now coming up, we've got two promotions coming up, both starting March 1st, the Waves of the Ocean Collection. It's a beautiful um, collection of products. I did share that uh, little sneak peek a couple weeks ago on my Wednesday live stream. And guess what? The mini boss, as I call it, with the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine is gonna be 20% off starting March 1st through March 31st. In addition to a selection of 13 bundles, that work well with the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. How cool is that? So that's coming up on March 1st, which is next Tuesday, right? 
I think I'm doing, I, my brain is all jumbled, but I believe that's the case. So let's see. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Now I do have a couple show and tell items from the kids. Let me flip my camera here for that. Oh, and it's totally in the wrong orientation. So hold on, let's come back to that. It's weird. I got a phone call during the live stream even though I um, set my... Um, do not disturb on so let's try to flip that we're just we're live there we go <laughs> okay um, no one really wanted to show you his practice of his phone number or phone numbers man his numbers today he was pretty proud walked in the door and showed this he is six in kindergarten and he wanted me to show you the other side as well doing some math skills here and I talked about this a few weeks ago but this we finally got Lily's um, powder puff pinewood derby car back so she decided to do a cookie car with the Girl Scouts, um, Girl Scouts of Nor G S G A, Girl Scouts of Greater Atlanta. That's what she put here on her little Girl Scout emblem. And we're chuckling a little bit because we had a little bit of a faux pas with <laughs> the glue. But you know what? What is that? Electrical tape? It works really well. Gorilla tape. Anyways, the weights and everything, this brings me back to my memories of my brother being in Cub Scouts, but the Girl Scouts get to participate now in the Pinewood Derby. So she came in second for her troop, but that was a super fun thing. All right, let's jump into tonight's projects. Let me see, which one are we going to start with? Let's go ahead and switch that. There we go. All right, so here are the two projects. This card, again, man, they're making a lot of noise up there. <laughs> Brian will be right back. You can go up there if you need to. Um, kids, right? Um, so this project is, oh, I'm looking at your temperatures, you guys. I don't mean to brag, but it's 70 degrees here in Atlanta. <laughs> I don't know why. It's really, really weird. Um, ben and Jerry's ice cream and Julie. It's a great night. Debbie, I love that. So I love this gives because this gives you versatility. You can just do just the scalloped part and have that be a little sweet little treat to give to someone. This is a Dove, um, what are they called? Dove Promise, but this is the dark chocolate. I picked the one with the red foil. And then here is the shadow box and I've got, can you hear that? The little magnetic closure. Here's the shadow box and you guys look at this treat. Okay, hold on. I went to my local Target today and they have these lint bugs and bees for Easter. How perfect is the bumblebee and the ladybug? So you can easily adapt this project to be the ladybug or the bumblebee. I want to say this is around $5 at Target. I did try to look for them on Amazon and the, I didn't like the prices on Amazon. So check your local Target or I'm sure Walmart may have these as well. If you guys have seen these, let me know, okay? Um, but absolutely love those. So let's go ahead and start with the shadow box project tonight. I want to share with you, we're going to do that. This looks similar to the style of shadow box I did last week with the little book fold. Um, this is even simpler to do. So I wanted to show you how I've done that. I've just put the cover here on the side and the front. I didn't wrap it around to the back. And you may notice here on the edges, there's a little bit of a gap there. I opted not to do the tabs on this because I wanted this to be a little bit faster to put together, but oh so cute. And then I forgot to show you on the inside, it says my friend. So really, really cute. All right, oh goodness. The, <laughs> the um, temperatures that are going in the comments is crazy, you guys. Stay warm, please, please, please. All right, so let me put the card away. I wanna show you also the products we're using tonight. Now on the Bumblebee, I used the, it's the Host Paper Plenty, pa the Patterns one. But I wanted to show you, if you get the All Together collection, we've got a striped pattern in here. Let me see if I can find it. Of course not while I'm live. I have the, in the, um, I'll, I'll show you later, but the All Together collection, we're using that. We're using the Hello Ladybug bundle, which I love a punch bundle because the price is fantastic. I don't remember the exact price, but it's probably around $36, I'm guessing, or maybe it's even cheaper than that. But you get the Ladybug Builder Punch, which can also be a bumblebee, and this great photopolymer stamp set, okay? We're also using the Scalloped Contours dies, and I'm using this second to largest. This is what we're using for the card. I'm just gonna show you these so I can get them out of the way. 
And then the Simply Marvelous paper, which is only gonna be available through Monday. Again, this is free with a $50 purchase. I think somebody said it could be a bunny too. Ooh, a bunny. And I saw also um, a butterfly, if you do two wings next to each other. So super versatile punch. I love it. I don't know why it's taking me so long to play with it. Super cute. Let me get my pieces and parts out here. We're going to start with, of course, Bumblebee cardstock. This cardstock measures seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. This project will post to my blog, thepaperpixie.com, on Friday. And we are going to now, you guys will have to tell me in the chat. I think the Simply Scored only comes with three markers. We used to be able to buy them separately, so that's why I have four. I figured I was going to get a question about that. Uh-oh, hold on. <laughs> my, my phone is being fidgety, so give me one second here. We are learning. Come on back, hopefully. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> oh, goodness, gotta love it. All right, so I touched my phone. I shouldn't have touched my phone. So seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. We're gonna score this at five eighths, one and a quarter, one and, I don't have my measurements here, one and seven eighths. Do you mind going to grab my notebook sitting on my desk? <laughs> and two and a half. So let me repeat that. Five eighths, one and a quarter, one and seven eighths, and two and a half. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I can't do it without him. We're gonna do this on all four sides. So five eighths. Thank you, Kathy, only three. One and a quarter, one and seven eighths, and two and a half. One, five eighths, <laughs> sorry, that's five eighths, one and a quarter, one and seven eighths, two and a half. I do know there are folks that 3D print the markers. I think you can find on Etsy. I think I saw a couple comments about that. So five eighths, one and a quarter, one and seven eighths, and two and a half. Let me double check myself on that. Yes. And then because this is square, I'm gonna go ahead and do three and one eighth, but I'm gonna stop at the second horizontal score line. So three and one eighth, four and five eighths, stopping at the second horizontal score line. Rotate it 180, and we're going to do the same thing. Three and one eighth, four and five eighths. That's it. So that's a little bit simpler. We're not doing the other score lines on the other side. Next, we're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. So just a quick note, everybody, we are not doing prize patrol tonight. I see all your prize patrol comments. All right. This just gives us some crisp edges here. And it helps me to see the score lines a lot easier too. All right, so grabbing my paper snips, I do have a template. So this template should look a lot simpler compared to last week as well. I just wanted to show you a different way to do, um, you guys, a, a different way to do um, a shadow box. So essentially what we're gonna do, focus on the 16 squares in the corner. I think I did that right, four by four, 16. All right, so, Nancy, welcome. All right, we are making another shadow box, Dauberdu. So I'm gonna come in four score lines and cut up four score lines. Essentially, we are just removing those corner 16 squares. Turn it a quarter of a turn. Now you might be able to do something cool with the excess cardstock here. It looks a little bit like, eh, maybe you could make do for a waffle, but probably not. <laughs> and we're gonna repeat that in all four corners. Linda, welcome to the live stream. All 
Aw, happy midweek sanity. That's right. I hope that this is always an escape for you guys and is a fun evening for you. That's what crafting is all about. Welcome, Betty. All right, so we have done those four corners. And then you'll notice we've got those short score lines again. So I'm going to come in. This is much easier. <laughs> I promise, Gail. I'm going to cut up those short score lines. Just right down the middle of them. That helps us with our little diagonal cuts. Wait till you see how we put it together. Way easier. It's all preference and um, sort of the finished, pro the finished product, what you want it to look like. So we're going to create these little diagonal tabs or diagonal cuts here. So I'm just going to come in from this score line and cut diagonally up to the left to the bottom of that cut line. Like that. And then I just kind of flip it. Since I'm right handed, it's just easier for me to cut up into the left. I'm going to repeat the same thing here. And that's the trick. You go to the score line below the cut and then cut up on an angle. And that gives us that quintessential um, shadow box. It gives us that frame look. Like so. Okay. Now tonight we're going to use liquid glue. Okay. Because we have time on our hands as far as the way that this is going to go together. Now I'm going to bring out magnets and I want to pop this up on the screen really quick because I know you're going to ask. So I do have an affiliate link with Total Element. If you use the coupon code PAPERPIXIE, you'll get 10% off the Neodymium magnets. Now this link will take you directly to the magnet size that I use and recommend. So keep that in mind. To be careful not to touch my um, cord again. <laughs> Lesson learned. I have a couple sizes of magnets that I've ordered over the years, but these are my favorites. So I'm going to grab two of them just to have them out, but we need to place one of them now. So I'm going to show you the trick here. Good. Okay. I'm going to grab a mini glue dot, or I should say I'm going to stick my magnet to the mini glue dot like so. And then if it's easier for you, you can use your hands as well, but I'm going to pick up that magnet and I am going to place it on the third section in. So let me show you, I'm gonna place it there. The third section in, just right centered from top to bottom. We wanna place that now before we glue in the sides, okay? And this template will be listed on my blog post as well, so you can use it for reference. Let me move it out of the way for now. I'm saving the other magnet. We're gonna bring it back in just a moment, so hopefully it doesn't, lose, doesn't get lost. And I'm gonna grab liquid glue, and we're gonna start with the sides. So I'm gonna put liquid glue, I'm on the outside here. Liquid glue, oops, majorly squeezing out. Okay, let's make a mess here. <laughs> Adhesive boogers. All right, so liquid glue. And I'm gonna fold on the first score line and the third score line, and just gonna press that flat, okay? You can use uh, tear and tape here as well, okay? Now we do kind of want to remember where we put that magnet, but I will show you how we can double check and find it again. <laughs> I'm going to do the opposite side again, liquid glue here on the outside section. And then fold on the first and the third, okay? And I'm just, I'm taking my time here to make sure that that adhesive holds, stays put. All right, so now this is the fun part. Remember we were doing tabs before. I'm just gonna put liquid glue and you'll see that I didn't do any mitering. We don't need to. So first score line and third score line, fold it flat. And then opposite side, glue on the outside section, fold on the first and the third. And liquid glue kind of gives me a chance to make sure that that's in between those two side sections. Now here's where the magic happens. Fold up the ones that have the diagonals and then you can fold in. Let me do it so you can get my hands out of the way. It's going to go together like this. So cute. All right, so I'm going to look. My magnet, I don't know if you can see it, 
it's right in the left side here. So we actually want that to be on the right. Now we can also check again before we put the cover on, but here's what I'm gonna do with liquid glue. I'm gonna do a dot of liquid glue in the four corners. Now, if you uh, have a hard time with getting too much glue, you could also do glue dots here. I personally like the liquid glue, but let me put the glue, the little glue dots there. So those four corners, the trick is to pull up the sides first and then press the, uh, the sides without the angles in and that kind of prevents the glue from getting everywhere. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm kind of squeezing on all four sides, but trying to press that glue down. Now we could have done that with tear and tape as well. It's just a little bit finickier, finickier <laughs> to get the backing off the tear and tape. So I am just, I wanna point out, we put the glue on this side, but it's right underneath that angle. So I'm just strategically putting my fingers right in that upper, what is that? The, well, upper left corner, upper right corner, but that's not gonna make sense. <laughs> so much easier, you guys, yes. Now I will tell you, you will notice that the structure of it isn't as strong as you would have with tabs. So for this, because it's kind of a sweet and tiny little project, I opted to make this a little bit simpler to put together. So I'm just making sure that's stuck down. Now if for some reason that glue doesn't hold, you can always redo it again. So that's the basics of the shadow box. Let's see. I'm making a mess over here. I'm gonna bring in the other pieces and parts. So this is gonna be the cover and this piece measures two and three quarters by three and three eighths. We're gonna score that at five eighths of an inch. Hey, Melinda, do me a favor and let me star that because I want to make sure I get your question. When, you're at, when you guys are asking questions, make sure you put a Q colon in front of your question and we'll grab those during the Q&A time. So five eighths of an inch here. And then I'm just going to fold and burnish. Oh, good, Margo. Now you can do that. Hopefully I wanted to... My, my goal is to get everybody to try a shadow box. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go ahead and glue this down. I wanna make sure I'm doing this in the right order. Let me think this through for a second. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna put liquid glue on the inside on this little 5 8 of an inch section. Now what I like to do is to place this part on the top first and then just make sure that that wraps over the edge. It's just right. You're gonna have, I don't know, about a 30 second of an inch. I didn't wanna give you crazy measurements for this project. So just making sure that that's laying over the front and the sides there, but just liquid glue, or you could use tear and tape as well along the side, okay? Now let's put together a couple of things here. We're gonna do some stamping. My magnet, I didn't check it, uh-oh, PJ, hold on. <laughs> I should have known I didn't check it, PJ. Thank you. All right, let's see if we can recover this for a second. We can. I'm going to do some surgery here. Faux pas, right? So hopefully you learn from my mistakes. I always learn during my live stream. This is going to require lots of fixing. <laughs> I don't want to have to do the shadow box in front of you again, so... I'm trying to think how we can fix this. All right, let me try this. We're gonna do some surgery here. Let's see if I can um, get another magnet. <laughs> oh, where'd I put my glue dots? They're right in front of me. Nope, there they are. We're gonna try this. <laughs> oh, and I pulled apart the wrong side. See, check the magnet, Patty. That's too funny, you guys are hilarious. All right, so the magnet is on this side, right? This is how we're gonna fix it. Where'd I put my magnets? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I think, you know, like I think I'm done with something. Here we go. Magnet, we'll fix it. 
cardstock is so forgiving, right? We'll see how we can fix this. I'm gonna slide this up underneath. Is this gonna work? Let's see, different tool. Oh gosh. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna show you what happens if your glue stops sticking in those corners. We're just gonna have an extra magnet in this sample. How's that? Sides up. Oh yeah, you all know, right? We're crafters. Opportunities for embellishment. That's what we have going on here. We're recovering. All right, that side is stuck down pretty darn good. One more magnet. Oop. I have one of those magnet um, tool holders that holds my dies and the magnet is now stuck to that. So we're not even gonna attempt to get that one off. There we go. We did it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's how we're gonna glue how we're gonna put the magnet in place. I'm gonna close the lid here. We're gonna hide the second magnet. I'm gonna place it like that. So I know that that is the right positive and negative. When I pick this up, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna put the glue dot on the back side of it, okay? So I'm gonna pick it up and make sure that I place that the right way. And then I'm gonna actually use my finger for this cause I wanna let the magnet guide the placement. You don't want to be stuck to the glue dot, so, as I'm stuck to it. <laughs> I tell you what, this is hilarious. Okay. It jumped right underneath the cardstock. There we go. So that's where we want the magnet to be, because we're going to hide it underneath our paper layers. Okay. Now, I've experienced a lot, or I've, I've experimented a lot with magnets. If you really want your magnets to stick, I recommend using the E6000 glue for purposes of paper crafting projects if you're doing them pretty quick. Um, I use glue dots, but over time, the magnets, because of their pull, might pull loose from those glue dots. Now with this, because of the way that we're gonna put this together, obviously the magnet that's underneath here, that's not gonna go anywhere. Cardstock's gonna keep it in place. And this one, I'm gonna put a glue dot on the top of it and stick it to the layers we're gonna put over it. So it should stay put, but if you're worried about that, um, I would use E6000 glue. And also please be really careful around children as well. So I always try to be super careful with magnets if they're gonna be around children. All right, let's do a little bit of stamping. Now, we're, now that we're back on track. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I am very particular about my black inks. So I prefer stays on for um, black ink. Now I know it's gonna stain my photopolymer. I'm okay with that because it doesn't hurt the photopolymer. I also don't use the stays on cleaner because that will affect the photopolymer. So I'm just gonna show you, I've got my dirty chamois here. I've got that right here that I'll quickly clean off my stamp after I use it. So I'm actually gonna put that right off to the side here so it's ready to go. Just trying to prevent as much staining as I can. And we're using the sentiment, you can bug me anytime. So the magnets, Renee, let's see, I just saw that. Total element. So if you use that link, the paperpixie.com slash total element, that will take you directly to the um, Magnets that I use, and then if you use coupon code PAPERPIXIE, you'll get 10% off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stamp. Again, cleaning off this stamp as quick as I can. And then while we got the ink out, I'm also gonna stamp the inside my friend and these pieces I didn't even tell you the measurements let me stamp first and then I'll tell you the measurements I love photopolymer because we can see exactly where we're stamping <coughs> and I don't know about you but I love the smell of stays on it smells like um, almond extract 
All right, so measurements here. The basic black measures two and five eighths by two and five eighths. This one measures one and three eighths by one and three eighths. We've got the Simply Marvelous that measures two and a half by two and a half. And this is the one that's in the um, bumblebee or crushed curry color. And then we've got our basic white that is one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So teeny tiny, but that's gonna fit on the inside of our box and look really cute in there. Get that closed up, let's glue these down and then we're gonna make our little bumblebee. Yeah, I can't get enough of this Simply Marvelous paper, and I love that it's a freebie. You guys are loving it. I think it's one of the most redeemed celebration items with my customers. Can never have more, can never have too much of it, I should, I should say. Can you use stays on with alcohol markers? Um, Kathleen, you, I would not recommend it because you want to use opposite. So the markers are alcohol-based, and so is stays, or stays on the solvent ink. You want to use the um, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I just want to grab that because I didn't see a cue in front of your question there. All right, so we've got our pieces and parts. Let's go ahead and put this guy on the inside. Liquid glue is your friend here because it's going to be a little difficult to get in there and place it in the right spot. I'm just going to kind of drop it in and then just slide it into place. That's so, so cute that little inside sentiment. All right, so for this, I'm gonna grab dimensionals and I'm not gonna be skimpy on them. We're gonna do a bunch. Just want this to stay in place. We're doing eight. Eight is a lot, but they're cheap. <laughs> and I am purposely the middle ones I'm keeping um, towards the middle because I do want to make room for that glue dot and here's what I'm going to do with the glue dot grabbing my glue dots I'm sorry what I'm going to do with the magnet grabbing the glue dots and I'm going to place a glue dot on the magnet so it's going to be stuck to both the bumblebee and this piece as well so let's make sure that's going the right way I'm going to center this here just kind of press that all into place. So our little magnet is hiding right there. Okay, cute. All right. Okay, next let's do our little bumblebee. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, this is from the All Together paper, but you can also use, this is the host, um, the host paper as well. I wanna say it's, Pattern Party. You get 48 sheets in that. That you can purchase with Stampin' Rewards on orders of 150 or more. But either of these work. So I'm gonna grab, this is the Daffodil Delight Dark. Okay, and if you're looking for blends labels, I do have them as a digital download for purchase. That also includes the new um, natural tones as well. We're just gonna wing it and do it right on here. I would normally do a scrap piece of paper. Um, but I'm just going to come in and color. Oh, look what I just did. I colored on the mat. Wooey. So I'm just going to come in and roughly color on the stripes. Now it's going to look like on the black that it's darkening the black. It's just while the uh, markers are wet and then you won't see it. So you don't really have to stay within the lines, which I love. I love being a messy crafter. And I like using the brush tip for this as well because it gives me, I can do it much faster that way. So I think four is probably going to be good. Let's make our bumblebee. Where'd I put the punch? Oh, here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and come in. Now I'm going to start from the left because I want to make sure I can get as many bumblebees as I can from this. So I'm just going to, while we have it, I'll punch a few and show you. I'm trying to straighten the lines a little bit. 
even though they're not exactly straight. And then I'm just gonna move my way down and maximize how many bumblebees I can get. We can get four. There we go. So cute. What's the DSP? The designer series paper is from the All Together collection. That is available for purchase now. Got my bumblebees. We only need one of them, so I'll hang on to one of them. Save that punch for later. All right, and I'm also going to come in with my paper snips, and I'm just going to cut his head off. Sorry, bumblebee. We just need your body. Put the bumblebee punch away, and I still need it. All right, so now we're going to come in and do a bl basic black. Each one of those. Now, I'm telling you, once you start making these, you can't stop, so just be ready to make a whole bunch of them. And then I'm going to use vellum for the wings, okay? And again, I'm being strategic about where I'm punching. I'm not worried about what's showing up here. So we'll get the wings from vellum. All right, let's piece this bad boy together. Oh, so cute. I love this idea. Julie Gilson is genius. All right, so there's that. Now I'm gonna take one mini glue dot because we're gonna hide this with an embellishment. So we did a glue dot right in the center there and we're gonna place that on our little bumblebee. And you can do a rhinestone. For this one, I'm gonna use one of the larger matte black dots and place that right over that glue dot and we're gonna hide the glue dot. That's what you gotta do with vellum or you can use, I know there's special vellum, I think it's tape that you um, is hidden but I love using glue dots for that. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in our, I don't have this label, this is the medium daisy punch. I'm gonna punch two of those out. And we're just gonna layer those on top of each other to make a little daisy for our bumblebee to hang out on. Use your silicone craft mat if you're heavy with the glue here. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and glue this to the front. I think I'm gonna come down here. And then I'm gonna do a couple of dimensionals on our bumblebee, and this project will be a wrap. All right, you guys have great questions. I can't wait for the Q&A. And then we're just gonna pop that up on dimensionals. Oh, so cute. So here is our Hello Ladybug shadow box. I do need to put my chocolate in there. That's the best part of the whole thing. I'm gonna beg, borrow, or steal and put our little bump. Well, I wanna show you the inside. There's my friend. Don't pay, att don't pay attention to that mess there. <laughs> There's our chocolate. There's that satisfying click of the magnets. Let me do that one more time. Boom, and our cute little shadow box. I love it with the Simply Marvelous behind it, but how cute is that? And then all you would need to do is just tweak this and create a ladybug for the ladybug chocolates in the lint. Let me show you if you've joined late. This is what I found at Target, the lint bugs and bees, milk chocolate with hazelnut and crisp filling. So that is project number one. Project number two is super quick because I've done a lot of legwork ahead of time. Let's jump into that. I'm just gonna lay into this right here because I have so much stuff. All my scribble notes of the measurements. All right, so I share with you the contours dies. That's the scalloped contours dies and we're using the second to largest one. It has the polka dots. I cut that out of real red. Then I've got a piece of basic white that measures two and nine sixteenths, which is just one sixteenth larger than two and a half by three and seven eighths. And that will perfectly frame within those, uh, the stitching of that die.
Now ahead of time, I had some fun with my scan and cut. The Hello Ladybug stamp set does not come with um, coordinating dies. It's just the Ladybug Builder Punch. So I'm not a fan of fussy cutting. I just don't enjoy it. So I stamped a whole sheet of the leaves and the daisies or the flowers from the stamp set. And I just had my scan and cut do the work. So I made a whole bunch of these. This is in Granny Apple Green and this is in Bumblebee. But look how nicely the scan and cut cuts. I love this. I only use it for stamp sets that don't have dies and when I'm creating multiples of things. So these are so quick and easy to make that I couldn't not fill a whole sheet with them. But that's what the excess looks like after it's gone through the scan and cut. And we are going to start to build our background here and then we'll make our ladybug, all right? Let's see, we're gonna do the sentiment here. And again, I'm gonna use stays on. I just get a much finer stamped image with the stays on versus the memento. And it could be because my memento is um, over inked perhaps. So we're gonna use the sentiment, may your greatest wish come true. Thought that was kind of cute for a ladybug sentiment. This could be for a birthday or just a just because. Again, I've got my messy <laughs> uh, Simply Chamois here, just trying to get that as clean as I can. It's still gonna stain a bit with the stays on. But I'm again, I'm okay with it. It doesn't affect the stamping. I know I need to use glue dots. That's another trick that I haven't done with this, but if you put glue dots on the plastic cover, it'll always stick to the lid. I should probably follow my own tip there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. Now we're starting with this piece because I wanna show you how cute it is on its own. I'm just gonna create a little collage here with the leaf and the flower and then we'll create our ladybug. Dimensionals. Just gonna put three dimensionals in tight in the center there. Like that. Doing a rhinestone. Gotta have a little bit of bling. And there's a cute center stamp in the Hello Ladybug stamp set as well that you could fill that with any color. And let's work on our ladybug. All right, so I realize, can you look in the um, grocery bag over there for the Dove chocolates? It should be on the chair that's hiding. I forgot to grab a Dove chocolate for this. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna do real red for the wings. I always forget which way the punch goes. That's disappeared again. <laughs> All right, and then stays on for our polka dots. Make sure I'm going the right way with those polka dots. Whoops, let's do that one more time. There we go. Clean off that stamp really quick. Don't you love the squeaky squeegee noise? Yes, we are gonna do Q&A at the end. So if you have a question, put a Q in front of your question and we will answer questions. I see a lot of duplicates, but I will get to that. I, I will answer your questions, okay? All right, so, and should I put it back here? 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and punch out the wings. I love the white border that our stamp gives with the punch. And then we're gonna punch out the body in basic black. Catch him popping out of there. All right, so the Dove Chocolate. Now I know in some cases there are rules with whether or not you can add adhesive. This is one of those where if those rules aren't in place, this is how you would do it. I'm just gonna use mini glue dots here. So on the bottom, well on the body of the ladybug, let me move that out of the way. I'm gonna place two glue dots. I'll show you close to the camera. I like two because then the chocolate won't move around, but I'm just gonna put two glue dots like that and then place my chocolate right there on the body. This Dove chocolate's like a perfect fit for that ladybug. And then I'm just gonna take another two glue dots on the wings. And I'll show you close to the camera as well. Like that. Place that on the chocolate. Now the recipient's still gonna be able to get at the chocolate because the glue dots are just gonna stick to the wrapper. And then we can take the body here and just put some liquid glue because we're going to attach that to this piece. Like so. Now, this just as it is would be the cutest little random act of kindness to give as you're out shopping at the grocery store or for your nail technician, your postal carrier. Super cute, but with just one additional, well, two additional pieces, you can turn it into a card. So I'm gonna grab a piece of granny apple green that measures eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored it in the center at four and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish that. Now I wanted to add a little bit of sort of a watermarked effect, so I'm gonna grab a granny apple green here. and do color. I love the tone on tone with ink like that. You can also do this with Versamark if you wanna have an even more subtle watermark effect. I love the tone on tone, gives it a little bit more of a pop than Versamark. Then this piece we're just gonna layer here with some dimensionals. And now, I'm realizing you don't really have a flat surface while you're doing that because of the chocolate, but it's so worth it. Now this would be a very difficult thing to mail. However, you could absolutely mail it in a bubble mailer. You're just gonna end up paying the package prices for that, but kind of worth it. Who wouldn't want to get a little bit of chocolate in the mail? Obviously weather permitting. <laughs> if it's too hot, I do not recommend. All right, so we're gonna pop that on the card base. Grabbing a piece of basic white, I cut these in bulk, so four inches by five and a quarter, and we're just gonna make sure we put that on the inside so this card's ready to go to write a sentiment. Super cute Valentine, uh, Norlene, I agree. Didn't get my acting gear for Valentine's Day, but these are adorable. And I know that there was dove hearts as well. That would have been really cute for the ladybug. This is a good all year round with a ladybug as well. So let's bring on our projects. Here is what we made. Let me tidy up my hot mess of a crafter math going on right here. These are today's projects using Hello Ladybug. I love this bundle, super, super cute. If you haven't taken advantage of it, hopefully I've shared some great ideas to use. It's very, very versatile. Um, you can do butterflies, what did you say? You can do a bunny, you heard, you saw in the comments. Bees, ladybugs, super cute. So why don't we jump into q and I'll come back here and queue up the questions here. All right, let's see. I'm gonna just do Q. All right, and some of the, some of, I'm not doing the Q colon because I do wanna make sure that we get all of your questions here. So um, you're gonna see a few things that have a Q in it. So Mesquite and Quebec and Queensland when and why did you stop Prize Patrol? So Barbara Jean, when I switched to my new live streaming software, I don't have an easy way to do that. Um, I'm not saying that it's never coming back, but for now we're gonna focus on the projects as well. Do 
Do I have an idea when the out of stock items might return? I think you're asking about the blends. I'm not sure the date of when those are going to become available. Um, but maybe somebody in the, in the comments knows that. I just don't have that date off the top of my head. Do I choose the host code or is it generated somehow? I It's generated somehow, Kathy. Let's see. Hi, PJ. Hi, Amelia. Let's see. It does make it much easier to do, Kelly, the 16 little squares on each corner. Can I place a star in your pattern to help us remember where to place the magnet? Yes, PJ. Great suggestion. I will do that. The interior dimensions are one and a half by one and a half by five eighths. I'm showing it like you can see it. One and a half by one and a half by five eighths. Would a strip of DSP around the box reinforce it? Um, you mean as far as doing a belly band deb sheets? I don't know if that would reinforce it, to be honest, but it would be a pretty way to do that as well. Does the clear tumble glue work as well? I don't know, Mulan. I haven't tried the clear. I think you're talking about the one with the blue cap on it. I've heard people swear by it. I've never personally tried it myself. All right, let's see. You can absolutely use a Velcro closure, Darlene. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can. You should not use the blends with the stays on ink because you're going to have um, bleeding because it's a solvent and an alcohol. So you kind of need to swap. I think I answered that before, but you need to swap um, water-based ink. So the memento with the alcohol marker, markers and vice versa. If you're going to watercolor, you want to use the stays on and those won't smear each other. So when I use the stays on, Loretta, I actually just use the Simply Chamois. Um, it's just a, our chamois that is just with water. Now you can use the stays on cleaner in moderation. If you use it too much, it will break down the photopolymer. So I don't recommend that, but I just try to clean it off pretty quickly after I've used stays on using the, um, simply chamois. How much do I cut down my folders that I hold my six by six DSP? I cut them down to six and a half. You could also do six and three quarters. Those Avery L pockets are six and three quarter inches wide. So if you wanted the pocket to be square, you can cut it down to six and three quarters. Since I store it in a drawer, I cut it just an extra half of an inch down. Um, so to six and a half, and that works really, really well. The black and white paper is from, oh wait, one or all together, I'm, run, I'm go, not going in order. The all together blends, I'm not sure the date on that. I need to check that. Um, the black and white paper came from the All Together Suite, but you could also get it from the Pattern Party, which is a host um, pack of designer series paper in the annual catalog. The clear pockets for my embellishments, Mel, you can find those at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. They are four by six vinyl pockets intended to hold a passport, but I just cut down the backing of our designer series paper backing to four by six. And I just did here are the embellishments because all, as you know, all of our embellishments come in so many different sizes and I like to have them all uniform. So yeah, four by six vinyl pockets. You can find those on my favorites page at the paperpixie.com slash favorites. Can you please show us how to make a bunny? Um, I have to look that up, Kimberly. I'm not sure how to do that. Um, I'll see what I can find for you. I have the Scan and Cut SDX 125. Again, that is listed on my favorites page. I know there's gonna be quite a few questions about that. Uh, let's see. Yep, SDX 125, Brother Scan and Cut. I also love the Brother CM350. That's what I started with. The SDX 120, I think it's the SDX 125E. It's, it's much quieter and it has an auto blade, so I don't have to worry about setting the blade for different uh, thicknesses of paper. So stays on, I like the clearer stamp image that I get with stays on versus memento. I think it's because of the um, formula of the ink. I haven't been getting a lot of success with stays on, or sorry, with memento and photopolymer, so I opt for stays on even though it's going to stain my stamp set, so. Blends April 4th. April 4th, thank you for the blends. Thank you, thank you. Let's see, SDX 125E. Okay, so Snowy Mom, the holder I use for my six by six paper. Well, first, the clear pocket are the Avery L envelopes. I do have those listed on my favorites page as well. And I also use the Stampin' Storage Creative Crate. 
I put that that fits in my drawer and that's what I stack all of my dies, my six by six papers, my embossing folders. I love those creative crates. They are my favorite. Yes, Beth, um, let's see. Oh, I see your, I see what you're saying, Karen. It, they don't, the questions don't need to be in caps. You just have to include the Q and Q colon helps us a little bit better, but we're getting there. Um, can a person not nearly as smart as you figure out a scan and cut? Absolutely, Beth. I highly recommend uh, Demonstrator, the papered chef. She has a fantastic series of scan and cut tutorials. I've learned a lot from her tutorials and she sh uses Stampin' Up! products with it. So you'll learn a lot about cutting out um, images from designer series paper and doing all kinds of fun things with it. And she, she's really great at teaching using the scan and cut. So check that out, the papered chef. <laughs> Nicole, yeah, the, the squeaking sound. Yeah, I figured that wouldn't be some people wouldn't be um, a fun sound to listen to. I fold on the valley score line into a mountain fold. Hopefully that makes sense, um, Kelly. So when you score, you create a valley line. I turn that into a mountain fold. That's how I do that. The chocolate at Target Ava was around $5 and you get, well, five chocolates in it. So, <laughs> but what I was seeing on Amazon was really expensive. The Heart Dove candy version. Cheryl, I think the Heart Doves were only a Valentine's thing. So I don't know if you can find them now. I'm not sure if stores kind of take those off the shelves after Valentine's Day. Ooh, I see the spider emoji, Michelle. <laughs> Give me the creepy crawlies there. Um, oh, I bet you can make all kinds of bugs with this. It's a really, really cool punch. I know those who do punch art are probably having a field day with that punch. Good Sherry, I'm glad you like the new Q&A. Hey, Brad and Jackie. Let's see. Where do you get the scan and cut? I, get my, I got mine from Amazon, Dorinda. So I've actually got a link on my favorites page if you're thinking about buying it, I'd appreciate it. There's no additional cost to you. That is my affiliate link. Um, but I, I don't know, it's just a tool that I love to have, um, especially because I love to make multiples and it makes that, I just don't like to fussy cut. So it's worth, <laughs> it's worth the price for me because I'm not a big fussy cutter. The magnet size is, uh, one quarter inch in diameter and one thirty second of an inch in thickness. So if you go to the paperpixie.com slash total element, that'll take you right to the magnets that I recommend. They're free shipping. It's a U.S. company. If you use coupon code uh, paperpixie, you'll get 10% off of your uh, magnets. They've got great prices as well. I want to say it's $14.99 for 200 magnets and they ship really quickly. Again, free shipping. Love that company. Let's see. Daisy punch and two petals for the bunny ears. Cut off the antenna. Oh, so cute. All right, let's see. Do I ever use VersaFine? I do not, Bonnie. Um, I don't. I've tried it before back in the day, but I haven't used it recently. Um, again, the model of the Scan and cut, for some reason the comments are getting a little bit cut off here. That's not helping here. Oh, I'm making a mess of it. There we go. Um, so the SDX 125E, again, you can find that here at my favorites page. All right, I think that is it for the Q&A. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed this video, if you're watching on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, I'd love you to like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought and also follow my Facebook page as well. Thank you for joining me live. Again, thanks to my replay watchers as well. I hope you enjoyed tonight's projects and learned some great tips and tricks. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 230. I'll have two new projects for you next week and lots of tips and tricks for you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.